DeAndre is trending in the right direction for you. What does that mean just to have him back and what kind of things have you been working on to make sure that he is prepared and ready to go? Um, first, you know, what Dan said is 100% correct. He is trending in the right uh, direction there. Uh, just getting him back out there on the field, um, get him, getting him back in the swing of things, I'll say, uh, is important. Just the, just the little things from putting the ball away, running routes, making sure his eyes in the right place, just stuff we do every day with the other running backs. Coach, I'm sorry, almost. Coach Jamal, you know, last week, mentally, how do you help him not have that carry over to another week? What was your conversations with him like, you know, entering this week, going to this week? Yeah, um, I wish I can share the words with you. Initially, that I told him, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys can put two and two together. Um, but then, you know, of course, after the game is over, you get in, you watch the film. Um, you know, he takes full accountability. There's a lot of accountability in our room, which I love, and he'll be the first one to step up and tell you, "Hey, man, that was all on me." And then, not just in our room, he'll do that in the team setting too. So, uh, a guy like Jamal, uh, if I'm not mistaken first career loss or something like that. Um, he, he takes he takes pride in getting back out there on the field and taking those carries and showing that he's not that guy that's gonna form with the ball. So that's what that's the first thing you do is put him back in those situations so he can gain trust. Of course in us putting him back out there and we can gain trust in him. Craig Reynolds is a guy that I think you trust um, based on how you used him last year and this year. Why why when DeAndre was out was he not able to maybe get a bigger piece of the pie when it came to, to touches? Um, it's a little bit of everything. So when you look at Craig, of course, last year had a bigger role. Uh, we were doing certain things that we thought that Craig could do. Uh, of course, game plan is different each and every week. So it's all predicated on that. If we see something that Craig can do when Swift is not in there, then we can take advantage of it. He'll be in there. Uh, if not, it'll be JJ. If not, it'll be Jamal. I'm just curious, um, since we haven't seen him this year, I mean, uh, you guys have run the ball really well, but how much have you missed Jason Cabinda and, and maybe what he offers in some of the, the short yardage situations? Oh, man, first of all, just his attitude and approach is amazing. Every day he has the same attitude. He has the same approach when it comes to practice or a game. He brings a lot of juice and energy out there on the field. Um, and going out there, just being physical. You know, he's one of those old school fullbacks, I call him. Uh, he's downhill. I mean, he's trying to knock a guy out. So. We miss that in our room. We miss that, you know, him coming in there just talking about what he's going to do, how he's going to do it, and that right there carries over in our room. A lot of juice, a lot of energy. It's a particularly tough matchup for your position group this week. Uh, ben Johnson called this maybe the best run defensive front that you guys have faced all year. Has there been a focus, I guess, on, on one particular thing for, for your unit to, to get, come out successful? Not collectively as a group they do everything well as a defense. Of course, they stop the run. You see that on film. You see the numbers. Um, they got players everywhere, linebacker, corner, safeties, uh, and of course, that D-line, a stingy D-line. Um, we just got our work cut out for us. You know, We just got to make sure that we're on top of our game, uh, technique and finish, some of the things that we've been stressing all week long, some of the things that Dan's been stressing all week long, and uh, we just got to go out there and execute. Once you know training camp gets going, uh, you, you've held out DeAndre a little bit extra just to kind of get him uh, as, as close to right as possible. Does, like, what percentage do you need from him to feel that you can fully trust him on a Sunday? Let me pull out that measuring yeah. percentage thing. Let me see. Let me look at it a little bit, and maybe I can. I, I don't know, man. I wish it was something that uh, we could measure. Yeah. You know, I wish it was that. It's really a feel uh, for me. I'm able to see certain cuts in practice uh, or certain cuts in the game, uh, certain juice, uh, certain explosion. That's how I measure it, uh, if I had to measure it by the eye. So. I guess maybe a better way to put it is, like, do you need him to be somebody who can be full go, or can he be a guy that can be active and, and just have um, you know, set set amount of reps set aside because he's that impactful even if he's playing uh, you know, not a full go? Yeah, there's no doubt he's impactful. Um, however, we can get him out there. To your point, I kind of see where you're going. You, you're saying basically, and I'm not trying to say it for you, but you're saying, can he go out there and you have a certain package for him and you stick to the package versus the whole game plan? Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that that kid is, man, he's he, he's special. 
He's special, and we all know that, and I think you guys see it. So getting him out, getting him back, getting him out there on the field uh, in a limited role would be awesome. Any role would be awesome.